Hello, today we're having a look at anticyclones and the weather systems associated with them. Now, anticyclones are very often just regarded as fairly benign systems that are associated with calm, dry weather. But in fact, their interaction with both the subcontinent of southern Africa and um, low pressure systems absolutely drives southern African weather and we need to understand them a lot better. So let's just remind ourselves of the general circulation context in which the anticyclones exist. Along the equator we have the intertropical convergence zone, the ITCZ, and then the winds just to the north and south of the ITCZ or the tropical easterlies, sometimes referred to as the trade winds. And then north and south of those on the polewood side are the westerly winds. Now, as you can see, they are blowing away from the light blue dotted line. This is called divergence and is caused by subsidence on the polewood side of the Hadley cell. The result is a band of descending air along the subtropics. It is descending because it is heavy. And it's heavy because it's dry. Believe it or not, dry air is heavier than moist air, and the air has lost its moisture in the rainstorms along the intertropical convergence zone. Right, so this descending air then causes a zone of high pressure. Now, because of the spin of the Earth, it doesn't form a band. It, causes, it forms cells of high pressure, which, of course, are anticyclones, and hence the term subtropical anticyclone and these occur all the way around the subtropics. So let's remind ourselves of the basics. We have the South Atlantic anticyclone, the South Indian anticyclone, and of course we are told that these move north and south through the seasons, north in winter and south in summer. Now this is True, there is about a four or five degree north and south movement of the anticyclones, but in fact far more important is the east-west movement of these two systems. In the case of the South Indian anticyclone, this is much as 18 degrees of longitude east and west. It moves westwards in winter and retreats to the east in summer. Similarly, the South Atlantic anticyclone ridges in south of the country, but not on a seasonal basis. It does this behind cold fronts, and that means it's on a week to two week cycle. To summarize then, the South Atlantic anticyclone found to the west, the South Indian anticyclone found to the east of the country, and then we talk about the Kalahari High over the interior, but in fact the Kalahari High is a very rare event, despite the fact that it occurs commonly in textbooks and exams. It is far more common that the South Indian anticyclone ridges in over the interior than that there is a distinct Kalahari High. So the South Atlantic anticyclone exists in this zone, the South Indian anticyclone somewhere in there, and we can pretty much disregard the existence of the Kalahari High, but unfortunately it is in exams and textbooks. There is your ridging of the South Indian anticyclone. We need to understand more of the vertical nature of the, particularly of the South Indian anticyclone. So let's have a look at a cross section through the country from east to west. And what we see is that the upper air is descending over the interior. This is not the Kalahari High. This is a westward extension in the upper air of the South Indian anticyclone. And that causes subsidence over the plateau. Now, as the air sinks, it concentrates at a level above or just below the plateau. And this causes excessive warming and this is called a subsidence inversion. A warm layer of air forms in the subsiding air due to compression as it sinks, and this may be quite high above the plateau, or it might be down at just below the plateau level, so only visible over the eastern plateau slopes. 
Looking at the temperature height graph of this, you see that the air cools as you go up as you would expect, but halfway up there is an increase in temperature. This is your subsidence inversion, and that acts to block rising air. If we look at the temperature of the rising air, it cools at 1 degree Celsius per 100 meters, and this means that it is warmer than the surrounding air, so it keeps rising as the red shading indicates. When it gets to the subsidence inversion, it's cooler than the surrounding air, so it stops rising. Now, this will prevent weather forming under the subsidence. However, in summer, the subsidence inversion is so high that warm Indian Ocean air is able to penetrate into the interior, and with subsidence inversion at, say, three or four kilometers above the surface, it's possible for rain storms to develop. In winter, the subsidence inversion is below plateau level, and so the warm, moist Indian Ocean air doesn't even reach the interior. Okay, so let's have a look at the impact of anticyclones on a seasonal basis, starting with winter. Now, the South Indian anticyclone, as I've said previously, extends across the country in winter, and we're talking about April to September here, and in that process it is going to be advecting Indian Ocean air in, in the northeast. But as we said previously, the subsidence inversion prevents that air crossing the escarpment. So what is happening? The air in the upper air is descending around the anticyclone. So what we've got around the South Indian anticyclone is descending air, surface air is blocked at the escarpment, and the net result is that you get berg wind conditions to the west of the anticyclone. Now this of course is enhanced by the presence of a mid-latitude cyclone increasing the pressure gradient. The role of the South Atlantic anticyclone in this system is to push the cold front through. So the anticyclonic circulation around the South Atlantic anticyclone, when it ridges in south of the country, is going to push polar air onto the country. Over the interior, the weather in this situation is warm and dry during the day, and because the air is dry and the sky is clear, it gets very cold. So on the synoptic chart, we will see the cold front moving across the country and the South Atlantic anticyclone ridging in behind the front and advecting polar maritime air onto the southern Cape Coast behind the front. Ahead of the front, it remains warm and dry and cold at night over the interior, and the berg wind conditions persist on the coast. The resulting coastal low moves around the coast ahead of the front. The whole system, of course, is caused by the steep pressure gradient between the South Indian anticyclone and the low pressure, and also by the ridging of the South Atlantic high south of the country. Right, just to remind ourselves, the isobars are numbered every 4 hectopascals, and there is the coastal low. Looking at the synoptic chart of this situation, there you can see the South Atlantic high ridging in south of the country. Cold front is moving off to the east, and over the interior you have warm, dry conditions with advection onto the southeast coast, which will be producing cool, rainy conditions to KwaZulu-Natal and Mpumalanga. This synoptic situation is often referred to as the right hook, with the winds blowing anti-clockwise around the South Atlantic High. Moving on to the summer synoptic chart, we have our usual culprits, the South Indian anticyclone and the South Atlantic anticyclone, but in summer we add a low pressure trough, which is an extension of the intertropical convergence zone. Now a line drawn through the long axis of the trough is called the trough axis. Now this is important because there is convergence east of the trough axis and divergence west of the trough axis. Now that means where there's convergence, there's rising air, and where there is divergence, there is sinking air. And of course, where there's rising air, that's where you're going to get rain, and where there is sinking air, it's going to be warm and dry. Looking at a typical summer synoptic chart, there is our trough axis, and 
convergence east of the trough axis, divergence west of the trough axis. And of course, where there is convergence, you are going to get rain. And in summer, this is going to be in the form of line thunderstorms, and there will be warm conditions west of the trough. This might seem quite straightforward, but in fact, the South Indian anticyclone, when looked at in cross-section, leans across towards the west as it goes higher. So if we draw this cross-section, we see that the western margin of the anticyclone extends right across, and the eastern margin likewise extends across the country. Now that means, of course, that at different levels the wind is blowing in different directions. So in the upper air, the wind is blowing from the southwest in the west and in the, from the northeast in the east of the surface. Now this is sinking air, of course, in the anticyclone. So from the southwest, you're going to get warm, dry, sinking air. And in the northeast, you're going to get moist air coming in from the coast. And this creates a moisture front. And to the east of the moisture front, then, you're going to get thunderstorms developing, and the west, it'll be warm and dry. Now, this is completely contrary to what many books say, where they talk about cold South Atlantic air coming in. Now, that's just nonsense. There's no such thing. So um, the moisture front is created by subsiding upper air, nothing to do with the South Atlantic anticyclone. Right, so looking at it as a synoptic situation, there's the South Indian anticyclone advecting warm, moist air, the trough, and then above the trough is the extension of the South Indian anticyclone advecting warm, dry air from the southwest, meeting the warm, moist air from the northeast, which results in thunderstorms. Now, those thunderstorms rise up into that southwesterly airflow. So although the moisture is coming from the northeast, the thunderstorms move from the southwest in that upper air. Going back to our synoptic chart, there we can see, which doesn't show on the synoptic chart in orange, the upper air flow. And of course, your surface air rises into that upper air flow. So the thunderstorms formed along that line of the moisture front actually move then from the southwest towards the northeast. And those of you who live in the east of the country will be aware that thunderstorms approach from the southwest. Now, just to clarify one of the most common errors in school texts, you often see them saying that the moisture front is caused by cool South Atlantic air meeting warm, moist air to the north. This is absolutely wrong. The air to the southwest of the moisture front is very often much warmer than the air to the northeast of it. 